There's a lot of talk about AI research tools at the moment. If the YouTubers and the TikTokers and the bloggers are to be believed, these tools have or will revolutionize research. But is this all part of the classic hype cycle that surrounds new technology? Or can you actually leverage some of these tools to your advantage? Well, we'll do our best to answer that question in this video. Let's do it. Unless you've been hiding under a rock for the last year or so, and I wouldn't blame you for doing that, you'll know that the sudden rise of ChatGPT has been accompanied by the birth of an entire industry of so-called AI apps. This explosion has been accompanied by a frenzy of media attention, and suddenly it seems that almost no industry or field is safe from the disruptive force that is AI including the academic research space. So what does this mean for the world of research? Or more specifically, what does this mean for you as a researcher writing your dissertation or thesis? Well, it's certainly not the case that you can pour yourself a glass of your favorite red wine and kick back while your dedicated AI bot writes your dissertation, at least not yet. And even if this was the case, you could pretty much be sure that your university wouldn't be too happy about that solution, and understandably so. At the same time, some AI-based tools and apps do open up some interesting possibilities, and AI is, in all likelihood, here to stay. So in this video, we'll explore how you can potentially leverage this technology to optimize your approach ethically and sensibly. So grab a cup of coffee or that glass of wine and let's dig into it. Before we dive into the potential opportunities that AI tools present, it's important to first take a step back and discuss what these tools can't do. In other words, let's first have a little bit of a reality check. There are two aspects to discuss here. The first is university policies, in other words, what you're allowed to do. And the second is technological capabilities, in other words, what the AI is actually capable of, at least currently. Let's start with the policy point. Now, naturally, before you excitedly run down the AI path, it's essential to understand what your university or institution's policy is regarding all things AI related. Working with our clients, we've seen that universities are responding in quite a variety of ways. On the one side of the spectrum, many institutions have outright banned the use of all AI tools, which is pretty extreme considering that even something as commonplace as Grammarly, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, would fall under this ban. On the other end of the spectrum, some universities are allowing students to use AI tools to source information provided that they cite accordingly. Now, it's useful to understand that this topic of AI-generated content is a prickly one because it forms part of a broader ethical discussion regarding the ownership of intellectual property. At the simplest level, the core question is who actually owns AI-generated content? Is it the student? Is it the AI program? Or is it the creators of the data that the AI was trained on? And if so, whichever case it goes, how do you go about citing those underlying sources when so many of these tools don't even disclose what their data sources are? So it's a muddy territory and we'll see how it plays out over the coming months and years. But the bottom line is that every university is different and will develop its own policies regarding the use of AR. What's important for you is that you fully understand what the rules are in your specific case. If you're unsure, do ask your university for clarity. Don't just assume that it's okay or assume that certain tools are acceptable. We've already seen cases where universities are accusing and penalizing students for academic misconduct on the basis of something related to AI, and the students don't even know that they're crossing a line. So make sure that you fully understand what your institution's position is. The next important thing that I need to talk about is the technical limitations of AI-based research tools. While the capabilities of AI are admittedly pretty damn mind-boggling, at least in some use cases, it's important to understand that despite what the well-polished sales websites might profess, this technology is far from perfect, at least currently. And you, as the human, as the researcher, still need to check and double-check pretty much 
everything that the tools spit out. At the risk of oversimplifying it, generative AI tools essentially predict a sequence of words in response to the input that you've provided, your question or whatever you submitted to them. And that response is based on patterns that they've identified and observed in their training data. Now, granted, there's some amazing processing going on under the hood, and I don't want to understate how impressive that is, but it's important to recognize that AI doesn't understand what it's outputting, at least not in the way that a human would. It's merely providing a prediction based on the patterns that it's observed in its training data. As a result, these AI models can and certainly do suffer from what are called hallucinations, where the output can sound really, really plausible, but it's simply not grounded in reality. For example, ChatGPT has been known to provide references in perfect APA or Harvard or MLA formatting that are completely made up. The resources don't exist. Long story short, as much as AI tools have the potential to assist you with certain parts of the research process, and we'll explore that next, pretty much every task still needs to start and end with you. You need to ask the right questions or provide the right instructions. And most importantly, you need to carefully check and double check the outputs that you receive from any of these tools. They are, at least in their current form, not going to coach you or tell you what you're overlooking or misunderstanding. So it's best to view any of these tools as something of a highly fallible junior assistant that's just following your instructions to the best of their ability, not someone or something to entrust your entire research project to. All right, now that I've put a little bit of a disclaimer in place, let's look at what sorts of tasks you could potentially fast track by using AI-based research tools. Again, keep in mind that universities will vary in terms of what they consider to be ethical use of AI. And so even if some of these tools do look attractive, do look useful to you, be sure to double check with your institution beforehand. You don't want to end up losing your dissertation or losing your whole degree because you used a tool to shave an hour or two off of a multi-month process. In terms of tools, we'll break this section down into four broad categories. First, we're going to take a look at some tools that can help you identify and find literature that's relevant to your research questions and your research aims. Then we will look at a tool that can help you evaluate the quality and the credibility of all of those resources so that you're putting the best quality resources into your literature review or into your paper. Then we'll look at a tool or two that can help you build a literature catalog and synthesize all of that information. And last but not least, we'll look at some ways in which you can use AI to improve your writing and to just put some polish on your document. So without further delay, let's get into it. One of the first tasks within any research project is finding academic and even non-academic literature that's relevant to your specific research aims and research questions. This literature will typically feature in your introduction and then your literature review chapter and will form the foundation of your study. So it's really important that you get as comprehensive a view of the existing research as possible. To this end, there are a few AI tools that can potentially help speed up this process. First on the list is Site Assistant, that's S-C-I-T-E. Now, Site provides a chat-based interface similar to ChatGPT, but the difference is that it draws on academic literature as opposed to non-academic articles and websites. So you could, for example, ask it to give you an introductory overview of your research topic, and it would not only provide you with a response, but it would also list a set of references for the various statements that it makes. In other words, it will provide you with a set of relevant articles to go on and explore. You can find the link to Site Assistant as well as all of the other tools that we talk about in this video in the description below. Along a 
similar vein to Site, Consensus presents a, another option for finding academic resources. What differentiates it from Site is that it has more of a sort of search engine type interface, similar to the likes of Google Scholar. This means that you can enter your research question and it will present concise summaries of various studies that it views as relevant to your specific question. This is a useful way to broaden your net over and above Google Scholar or the academic database approach, although that is still required. Right, once you've collected an initial base of core articles, Research Rabbit is a, another tool worth looking at. Simply put, Research Rabbit allows you to upload a core set of articles, for example, the seminal literature on a topic, and then it will provide you with a visual map of related papers. By related, I mean papers that have cited your core articles that you put into Research Rabbit, as well as the papers that have cited those papers. Research Rabbit also allows you to set up alerts so that you can be notified of new citations, which is particularly useful if your research spans over a long period. So to recap, the three tools that we looked at in this section are Cite, Consensus, and Research Rabbit. These three tools all provide a potential starting point for finding relevant literature. The emphasis here though is on starting points. In other words, using these types of tools isn't a substitute for undertaking a comprehensive literature search using traditional academic databases and Google Scholar and so forth. All that said, these tools can help you fast track your literature. They provide an additional option in addition to the standard literature search process. And they can also be good for identifying some literature from adjacent disciplines that you may not have considered in your literature search. And that's certainly helpful. As I mentioned, you can find all the relevant links in the description below. All right, so once you've identified a comprehensive base of literature using the tools that I just mentioned and your standard techniques, then the next step is, of course, to evaluate the quality of those resources. This is a really, really important step as the strength of your study depends, at least in part, on the credibility of your literature sources. Now, evaluating the quality and credibility of journal articles or any sort of resource is a pretty nuanced task, and I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole in this video. If you are interested in that, you can check out our literature review bootcamp, and I'll include the link in the description. That said, a good starting point for evaluation is to look at how each article has been cited by other works, for example, how often has it been cited and in what context. To this end, the reference check function from Cite, which we just looked at, can be pretty useful. With this tool, you can upload any given article and it will then provide a report detailing quite a few useful data points regarding how the article has been cited. Specifically, it will tell you how many times the article has been cited, as well as the context of these citations. In other words, did the citing studies support or contrast the original article? Now, naturally, Actually, these classifications are AI powered and as such, they're far from perfect, but this sort of functionality allows you to get a quick overview of how an article has been received by the broader research community. The site tool will also raise any editorial concerns, which means that they'll check whether any resources have been retracted since publication, which is of course a major, major red flag and something you definitely want to know about. Of course, you'll want to verify any classifications or claims that site makes, but this is a useful starting point to identify problematic resources. Once you've quality checked your resources, you can then start building a literature catalog, which is exactly what we'll look at next. As we've discussed in many, many previous videos, building a comprehensive literature catalog is essential when it comes to staying organized and even more importantly, synthesizing or making sense of all the literature that you're bound to encounter. If you don't already know, we do have a free literature catalog template and you can find the link to that below. Now, while the cataloging and synthesizing process is naturally a pretty time and brain intensive task, there are some AI based research tools that you can use to help fast track this process. First on the list is Elicit. With this tool, you can upload your collection of journal articles and it will then extract key pieces of information and allow
allow you to quickly build a spreadsheet displaying this information. For example, you could have it create columns detailing the region, the population, the type of study, and so on. Of course, you'll need to double check that it's captured the correct information, but this can still save you quite a bit of time in terms of building an initial spreadsheet. Along a similar vein, a tool called Petal allows you to upload a PDF or a collection of PDFs and then interact with those PDFs using a chat-based interface. This can be really useful for finding very specific bits of information regarding an article or a set of articles. For example, you may wanna check what the sample size for a specific study was or get a quick summary of the key limitations for a certain study. Again, you'll probably wanna fact check all of these responses, but nevertheless, Petal is a useful little tool for quickly extracting bits and pieces of information from any given article. Now, an important disclaimer here is that while tools like Illicit and Petal can help you compile your literature catalog, they're not a substitute for actually reading and engaging with the literature or the articles and resources that you'll be citing. You will still, of course, need to have a deep understanding of the literature in your field in order to present a strong synthesis within your literature review. So don't make the mistake of over relying on these tools. As with any AI tool, all the outputs need to be verified and there's just no way that you can do that if you're not already familiar with the literature. All right, now that we've looked at some tools that can help with the reading side of the research process, let's shift the focus to the writing side. In other words, let's look at how you can use AI to improve your writing. Now, it's important for me to highlight that this is a thorny topic as you can very quickly get yourself into hot water if you don't follow your university's policies regarding written content. So again, make sure that you fully understand what is and isn't allowed before you use any of these tools. First up is Grammarly. If you're not already familiar with Grammarly, it's essentially a tool that helps you improve your writing by highlighting various grammar and spelling and punctuation and style related issues in any given piece of text. Essentially, Grammarly is like spell check on steroids as it goes beyond the basic spell check and offers suggestions for sentence structure, for word choice and for tone. While there is a free option, the pro version of Grammarly unleashes a host of advanced functionality that really helps improve your writing. Now, it's worth mentioning that Grammarly has two sides. The side that I've just spoken about, the functionality that I've just spoken about, is generally accepted and even encouraged by universities. Essentially, it's something of a really imperfect alternative to editing and proofreading. However, Grammarly now also has what it calls generative AI assistance or Grammarly Go, which is similar to ChatGPT in that it can write things for you. This functionality is typically not allowed by universities and using it could result in your document getting flagged for AI-based plagiarism or what's becoming known as AI-jurism. So at the risk of sounding like a stuck record, make sure that you fully understand your university's policies before using any of these tools. Last but not least, what would a video about AI tools be without a chat GPT suggestion? Now, there are of course many ways in which you can use chat GPT, but one option is to use it as a tool for exploring better ways to articulate your points. In other words, if you're struggling to explain an idea or a concept in a clear and concise fashion, you could paste what you already have written into ChatGPT and use a prompt along the lines of provide three rewrites of this paragraph in a clearer, more concise fashion or something like that. Of course, you can't go copy paste the content that ChatGPT gives you directly into your document unless your university accepts that, but you can can take inspiration from it to help inform how you could better convey and express your points. Along a similar vein, ChatGPT is really good at generating analogies and examples to illustrate points for various ideas. For example, you could use a prompt along the lines of, give me three examples of X or give me an analogy to illustrate how A impacts B. Again, you should never go copy paste the output from ChatGPT into your uh, project, but this sort of approach can help get the creative juices flowing and serve as something of an inspiration for your own writing. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground in this video. And to be fair, it's probably been a bit of a party pooper 
if you originally had very high hopes for the role of AI in your research project. That said, hopefully I've helped you to cut through the hype and get a bit more of a balanced view of what AI research tools can, can't and shouldn't do, at least at the time of making this video. If you wanna learn more about academic research and writing, be sure to check out the Grad Coach blog where we host a huge collection of free resources, including detailed explainer videos, how-to guides, templates, and even webinars. Alternatively, if you'd like to get hands-on help with your research project, be sure to check out our private coaching service where we guide you through each stage of the research journey step by step. Thanks for watching, and until next time, good luck.